Podcast First, sponsored by Matax Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. We've got temperatures that are right now in the upper 70s across central Illinois, 77 in Champaign, although it is 74 in Danville, 79 in Decatur and Lincoln, and still holding on to 80 in Mattoon. And from Gibson City and our Gibson Area Hospital and Health Services weather camera on our roofing dog on it, we've got clear skies out there with winds that are very light. We don't have any gusts out there, and the winds themselves generally out of the southwest between about 5 and 10 miles per hour. So overnight tonight, it will be mild with temperature dropping down in the 70s, and then once again for tomorrow, we're back in the low 90s. WCIA 3 News starts right now. Now from WCIA 3 News. One mayor says she's trying to prevent a spike in COVID-19 cases, but she needs city council's help. If you were having problems getting on Zoom today, you weren't the only one. I saw this guy and his two kids were at the gas station. Police pledged to protect and serve, but one officer decided to go a step above that for a family in need. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 10. Students can be very creative in their gatherings. That's why Urbana's mayor issued emergency orders restricting gatherings ahead of the fall semester. Good evening, I'm Jessica Coons. Thousands of U of I students have returned to Champaign-Urbana. Mayor Diane Marlin says she's trying to prevent a spike in COVID-19 cases, but she needs city council support to keep that ordinance in place. WCI3's Jen Last joins us now. So Jen, what's the latest update from tonight's meeting in Urbana? Well, part one has been passed. The council voted six to one to pass the emergency order regulating bars and restaurants. The new order will require people to remain seated at bars and restaurants, wear face coverings when not eating or drinking, and to maintain social distancing. And Mayor Marlin says that she plans on releasing a frequently asked question list to different bar owners for that. Now, uh, the city of, Champ of Urbana worked with Champaign on these legal orders uh, to make sure that they are consistent between the two cities. Some people spoke out at the meeting against limiting how many guests could attend uh, gatherings, for example, while others were arguing for even stricter regulations in the city. Marlin defended her orders. We tried to draw a line, you know, we're, we're kind of drawing a line between individual rights, between freedoms and flexibility, but also protecting the safety of the public. Some council members asked about how the city plans to enforce rules on private property versus public property and asked if it's up to the government to let the community decide how to behave in their own homes. The city's legal team says a lot of the decisions came down to conversations with uh, public health and university officials about what will help the cities the most. Now, council members are still debating the other part of the emergency order. That one would restrict the number of attendees, social distancing, and the use of face coverings at parties and gatherings. They just voted to add an amendment to the emergency that would have to be discussed again in late September rather than stay in place indefinitely. Back to you, Jessica. All right, Jen, thanks so much for those updates tonight. Earlier in the evening, Urbana and Cunningham Township held a special meeting about money for social service programs. First followers, Big Brothers Big Sisters, and Habitat for Humanity were among those denied funding. Officials said they had to deny some groups for turning in incomplete applications. Council members urged them to give groups more of a heads up if their applications were not complete since so many of those programs are hurting during the pandemic. Today marked the first day of the fall semester at U of I and a big part of the reopening plan, saliva COVID-19 testing. Students and staff have to have negative tests to get into buildings. People in line for testing today say it's now just another task on their to-do list. It's every like four days, so twice a week, they're having us get the test and then show our phone to get into the buildings and we have to have the building approved status. The U of I is using a hybrid model for classes, but students say it's ultimately up to them when choosing face-to-face -face or virtual instruction. Students at the U of I and across part of the country were locked out of Zoom this morning. The video conferencing platform had issues around 8 o'clock. U of I's technology services department started looking into the problem, and they found a solution for their students. This is a new environment for everybody, and we're all trying to do our best. And... Um, you know, with every issue or disruption that comes up that, you know, the university is committed to making sure that there is a way for students to learn, faculty to teach, um, and staff to do their work. 
They say professors use other platforms besides Zoom for classes if that program is down. For the second year in a row, kindergartners have shown an increase in readiness. The State Board of Education studies kids the first 40 days of kindergarten. They look at how kids interact with each other, do schoolwork, play, and follow directions. More than 118,000 students were observed last year. Nearly 30% showed readiness in the most important areas. So we look at three developmental do domains. We look at social and emotional. We look at language, language and literacy and math. And those are the three dona domains that we look at and uh, assess children's learning. The state also looks at the breakdowns across various groups, such as low-income students, black students, Hispanic students, and English learners. Those numbers are on our website, WCIA.com. Taking a look at today's coronavirus numbers, Champaign County set a new high when it comes to cases. On the first day of classes at U of I, there are 68 new cases in the county. The good news, the county's seven-day positivity rate has stayed at 0.3% for the fifth straight day. There are 1,600 new cases statewide, bringing the the total to more than 221,000. Eight more people have died. Illinois has seen more than 7,800 COVID-related deaths. A follow-up now. The city of Champaign is asking people for help in ending gun violence. Officials say shootings have killed two people and hurt eight others in the last two weeks. It's also resulted in property damage to homes, an MTD bus, and other vehicles. Officials say many of these shootings are targeting specific people and are a result of ongoing feuds. They're now asking anyone with information to come forward and share what they know with authorities. A Paxton man has been charged with predatory criminal sexual assault of a child. Brandon Irish is accused of assaulting a child under 13. If found guilty, he could face up to 60 years in prison. Irish was part of the Market Street Theater in Paxton as a choreographer and an actor. Motorcyclists are asking other drivers to watch out for them. This comes after several deadly crashes this summer. Just this weekend, two people on a motorcycle were killed in Decatur. Two others were killed in Christian and Effingham counties. Not every crash is the same, but motorcyclists say there are some things you can watch for while on the road. One thing, too, is uh, following too closely. Lots of times cars, I'll notice, it, it'll scare me. I'm looking in my rearview mirror, and there's somebody just right behind me. And the thing is, I can stop so much quicker than what they can. Another thing to consider to increase visibility is always keeping your headlights on. A family in central Illinois is mourning the loss of two family members. Five-year-old Elena Jarnigan was killed in a fire on Friday in Bethany. At the time of her death, her family was already grieving the loss of another family member. Jarnigan's great-uncle Mike Castelli died in a crash in Moultrie County Wednesday. Pastor Rob Roy of First United Methodist Church says in times like these, their community comes together. That's a very family-oriented community. We're, we are very shocked by this, and we are praying for this family, and we are just um, want to let them know that they're loved. Castelli's funeral will be in Lovington tomorrow at McMillian and Young. That visitation will be from 5 to 7. Jarnigan's funeral is still being planned. We have an update on a story from Georgetown. We told you back in June, former coach Josh Cavanaugh was accused of being racist towards students and football players. The Georgetown Ridge Farm School District says after questioning players, coaches, and a former student, they found no credible evidence Cavanaugh did anything wrong. He resigned as football coach this summer. New tonight, Illinois Republicans accused top Democrats of dragging their feet on ethics reform. During a virtual press conference today, GOP lawmakers from the State House and Senate said the push to crack down on corruption stalled during the pandemic. They say if other panels can still meet, they should too. They're going to simply try to play out the clock, get past the November elections, and not address this crisis in confidence that we have in the state of Illinois. It is time to put partisan politics aside, leaders. Harris and Sims, reconstitute this commission. Let's finish the work that we were tasked to do. The time is now. Your silence is corruption. It's, a, it's an endorsement of the status quo, and that is unacceptable to the people of Illinois. Four top Democrats who chair the Ethics Commission say they, quote, will meet to submit the final report to the General Assembly in the coming weeks. It's a picturesque sunflower field that's received a lot of attention. Why people are being asked to stop going there. Plus, one family found themselves stranded miles from home. How one officer tried to help. And later, there are now postseason plans for the IHSA, but it won't look like what you're used to.